presented are submitted by members of our community and are a proud sponsor of KNY 91.1 FM. The views expressed do not necessarily reflect those of KNY 91.1 FM and its affiliates. Welcome to Today with Cache. It's Thursday. We're here in the Woodlands, Texas, and boy, do I have someone in the studio this morning. The wonderful and amazing Matt <laughs> Hansen, Mr. Professional Triathlete yourself, uh, 2015, 2017, and 2018 Ironman Texas winner, correct? Correct. Correct me if I'm correct. wrong. No, that's, you, you're doing great. And we got another year right now, right? We got a yes. Saturday. We're about to bring it in. So welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, you you know what? I have to say, you're, you're pretty amazing in what you do. Um, I'm assuming you just fell out of bed one day and became an Ironman. Is that how it happened? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> no, is that how it works? Okay, well, it didn't work that way for me. <laughs> yeah. What? So, yeah, t so it's interesting because it's so funny. Um, we were talking earlier about how we met. I always start off that way. And, you know, it's funny. I can't say we met because I'm an Ironman and I'm a professional triathlete. But what we can say is what's so amazing about the Woodlands, uh, I was trying to see if I could dabble into the world if you will, and I did a couple of sprints, um, and you were swimming at the same pool uh, in the professional lane uh, with Tim at Magnolia Swim, and yeah. I remember seeing you in the water thinking, oh wow, is that possible? Uh, and obviously it's not for me, so, but anyway. <laughs> so tell us, tell us a little bit about, um, I want to first, I have to get back into your childhood a little bit, uh, whether it was Wheaties, whether it was, I don't know, something crazy I don't even know about, but tell us how it all began and a little bit about your childhood. Yeah. Yeah, um, you know, at least from the from an athletic standpoint, uh, my childhood was uh, focused around wanting to be like my dad. Okay. Um, he was always the guy I looked up to. My dad wrestled in college, okay. so I was going to be a wrestler from the time I was born. Um, but my dad was also running some competitive like 10Ks and 5Ks, and so he would come home from work, and you know, from an early age, I would go out, and he would take me on his warm up with him, and okay. then drop me off at home, and then go and do the rest of his run, and. Uh, by the time we were in middle school, I would go do the whole run with him. And by seventh grade, I would drop my dad off after my warm up. And I was going to say something run. was changing. Somebody, they yeah. knew something was changing, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. So okay. I mean, I, I didn't run competitively really in college. I, I after uh, wrestling career got over, I, I tried to run a little bit, but I was kind of a book nerd and and uh, took my studies pretty seriously. So never really focused on it. Okay. But uh, when I was 16, okay. I made a list of 50 goals for the next 10 years. Wow. I had a wrestling coach mentor that uh, challenged me to do that. And one of those goals, for whatever reason, was to do an Ironman triathlon. What is it? I'd never seen a triathlon before. So I didn't where did know you, well, then what made you think of it? You read it somewhere? You, you know, I think I, I yeah. remember seeing one of the Kona NBC 90-minute oh, okay. specials okay. on TV when I was a little kid. And so... Uh, honestly, coming up with 50 goals, a list of 50 things that you want to do as a kid is At really 16? tough. Yeah. Oh my God. And yeah. so I was running out of things to keep on the list. And, and you so probably were nailing it, them all. Boom, it, boom, boom, boom. It was number like 48 <laughs> wow. on the list. And, wow. But I, I kept that list pretty pretty close to me. It was always in my wallet. I took it out every year on my birthday and would look at it. And when I was 25, I was working on my master's up at uh, Southwest Minnesota State. And um, decided that was one more goal that on the list that I could go after. So I, I bought a $500 used bike off of eBay and okay. ate nothing but ramen noodles for the next three months oh so I gosh. could afford the bike and tried to learn how to swim and uh, started riding. And um, yeah, I planned on just doing one Ironman and being done, but okay. uh, I ended up qualifying for the world championships at Coeur d'Alene somehow. Uh, and, uh, wow. And yeah. you say that, I, I read something that said that Coeur d'Alene was one of your favorites. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a special place for me because that's where it all started. Um, that's really where my first real triathlon was. It's a beautiful area. 
Um, I've, it I've is. I've been there, yeah. Returned to race there four times, so that's the second most popular okay. place that I've raced. I've okay. won the half Ironman there uh, t two years in a row now, yes. um, so I'll be going back there again in, in June. So it sounds like it's really simple for you, Matt. You just say, if I want to do something, um, I just master it. Is that something within you that you you just go after, or is it both worth ethic, or does it just come effortless for you? Oh, it's it, you know, it's, it's definitely not effortless. I can I can tell you that. <laughs> um, you know, I grew up on the farm. Okay. Um, I worked with my dad. Um, uh, he had a remodeling company. And I worked with him a little bit. I worked for my uncle. Um, you know, spray. You know, worked that as a truck shop, cleaning the bottom of trucks before okay. oil changes and things like changing sure. tires. And sure. uh, so, from a young age, I learned a couple things. One was how to work hard. Sure. Um, and two was an education is important. Uh, so. And you've I, nailed both. I took those to heart and. Uh, my dad taught me how to set goals early on, and um, I've had a few good mentors in life. Um, sure. And I've just had been able to find new mentors as new paths in life uh, start. Um, you know, Tim here in the Woodlands has been awesome to me. Uh, you know, he was my coach, my swim coach for a long time. Now he's just a mentor and a friend. That's and uh, cool. every time I come into town, I get to jump in the pool with him. <laughs> I did his uh, buttercup sharky temperature oh reading this morning. I would sit there and just watch down there and look and peek and be like, oh, my God. I mean, I think I would, of course, I am no one to measure. But I, I would be like just because swimming was never my thing. Uh, you probably saw that but uh, with my flippers on. But <laughs> <laughs> I would sit there and think, how do you do that? Boom, 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 boom. And you're just like, so... To, to the point where we'll take a commercial, we'll get more into the questions, but real quick. So to be an Ironman, you obviously have to be good at both, all three of the sports, but I hear running is probably one of the most important ones of the three, if you will. Does that make sense? Yeah, they say, yeah. you know, bike for show, run for yeah. dough, right? Okay. In the professional <laughs> okay. world, you know, okay. a lot of people look okay. great on the bike, but, uh, it, you know, you got to bring it home strong, and yeah. uh, thankfully um, I've been able to put together a few runs, especially here in Texas, that... Yeah. Uh, have brought me to the front of the race. Awesome. Well, let's take a quick commercial. When we Perfect. come back, we're going to learn a little bit more about how you got there, okay? <laughs> okay, we'll be right back. We are broadcasting live from the Woodlands, Texas, to the world. You're listening to the only multimedia FM station in Houston, Texas. Your fusion radio. Top 40s, dance, Latin, country, pop, rock and roll. All in one station. Mixing genres and generations. You're listening to KNLY, New Waverly, Texas. 91.1 FM, The Boss. It's time to be super again. It's beach season. Fresh flowers fast. Call Barb's Iris Floral at 281-820-2294 with excellent customer service since 1983 for weddings, funeral services, sweet 15s, corporate events, and all occasions. For that special someone you love, barbsirisfloral.com and barbsirisfloralboutique.com. Come on in and pick out of our prestigious gallery at 727 Westmont Houston Road, Houston, Texas 77038. Text 832-466-8414. Barb's Iris Floral delivers fresh flowers fast. This message was from a proud sponsor to KNY 91.1 FM. Texas Crawfish and Music Festival. Come and enjoy the best crawfish in town. Music party for the entire family, April 27th and 28th. Save the date. Performing live, country music artist Junior Gordon. Special guest Curtis Grimes. And more artists. Doors open at noon both days at Preservation Park in Old Town Spring. Children under 5, free with an adult. $12 tickets priced at the gate. Purchase your tickets online at TexasCrawfishFestival.com. Sponsored by Planet Ford, Comfort Suites, First County Emergency Medical Services, Global Live, and KNLY 91.1 FM The Boss. We will see you there. This was a proud sponsor of KNLY 91.1 FM. This is E.L. Crane of Real Estate U here each and every Saturday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. 
on 91.1 FM, The Boss. Remember, that's Real Estate You, insightful, informative, and a little humor tossed in. Real Estate You, listening live, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. each and every Saturday at 91.1 The Boss. Do you feel that your energy costs are unnaturally high? Do you want to fortify your building and keep it strong and secure for years to come? Then NRG Spray Foam Insulation is the answer you're looking for. Our unique foam insulation is made to help our customers save in energy, prevent gas, air, and moisture infiltration, as well as helping with general stability in your building structure. Call us at 713-936-3021 or visit us online at nrgfoam.com for more information. NRG Spray Foam. Building green, living green. This message was from a proud sponsor to KNY 91.1 film. Welcome back to Today with Cache. It's Thursday. We're in the Woodlands, Texas, and I have Matt Hansen, Mr. <laughs> Professional Triathlete himself, in the studio this morning. So we're happy. Yes. So Saturday's my birthday, I was saying. Awesome. So you're going to win it for my birthday. Hey, and let's make it happen. <laughs> and I'm going to be standing there cheering you on going, yay! So... So tell me, okay, or tell us out there, uh, what is your training routine like? I mean, come on. Yeah, the, the, train, like? the training routine kind of varies from week to week, but as we get deeper and deeper, closer into the the race build, uh-huh. then uh, it, it gets pretty, it's my eight to, you know, eight to five. Yeah, you probably, whatever. I was going to say, I mean, what you get up at what time? What's uh, it like? What do you yeah. do? Yeah. Uh, every morning, I'm typically in the pool at six o'clock okay. uh, in the morning, um, so I wake up at usually about five. I have a cup of coffee, sit in the Norma Tech recovery boots for a little bit, wake okay. my body up, and okay. then get in the pool, um, go for a swim for about an hour and 15 minutes or so, uh, come back, have a little bit of breakfast, answer some emails, um, try to do a social media thing or two, and then uh, okay. usually get a bike in um, anywhere from an hour to five hours, depending on the day. Okay. And then, <laughs> Big uh, difference. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and then... Um, get out, take the dog for a walk, okay. and then come back and get my run in. Yeah, and so yeah, I don't know what your thoughts are on eating, um, but is there any specific, like myself, I don't eat a, I like the meats like porks, and I'm big into seafoods and vegetables. Is there a certain routine of eating that works for you? Yeah, seafood, eat it. Uh, Yay, we're the same, yeah. I love that. Yes, I try to, okay, keep going, yeah. So yeah, anything I see, I eat. Um, <laughs> oh, you're so okay. <laughs> so I, you know, I, when you're training yeah. as much as we are, I mean, we're five, 6,000 calories a day, and so it's... Oh, you're going to eat whatever you yeah, eat. Yeah, so really. McDonald's, I mean, it's, bring it. I, I haven't had fast food okay. in quite a long time, okay. but uh, I mean, I, yeah, if I really craved it, I guess maybe I would. It's been a couple of years probably, but... Um, so that's not the secret either, just yeah, to eat a certain Yeah, you're you're constantly eating. Um, I grew up on a, on a beef farm, yeah. uh, and you know, so I still get all my meat from back home on the farm, so a couple times a year we go up and bring home a, a quarter of beef. Wow. Um, yeah, and then uh, I have a garden in the summer that I enjoy. Okay. That's, so we can some of our yeah. vegetables that get us through about half the winter and, and obviously have fresh vegetables, uh, a f- couple fruit trees on our property. So, you know, I get a lot of the stuff straight from either my family or my backyard, which is which is awesome. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not a- adverse to having a, a cola or, or whatever. Right. A, so it's not because like, I always would think there's like a certain eating habits. Yeah. I mean, it's really hard. You yeah. Know, all, everybody talks about like eating clean and, yeah. and avoiding anything <laughs> Honestly, processed. Honestly, that's not and, working cash. You don't and, eat it. <laughs> you know, I, I think that's great, but yeah. it's really hard to get enough calories sure. to, you know, I, I really struggled. Um, I tried to do, you know, cut out cola when I was doing a couple builds every now and then and I just couldn't keep weight on and oh, wow. you know if I'm losing weight going you don't want to be too light going into an Ironman race sure. because you know you're going to lose 10 pounds during the race sure. probably um, and so you know it just so some you sustainability consuming what like five six ten thousand calories a day maybe? yeah not ten usually okay um, but yeah five to six on a, on a pretty regular basis okay um, depends on the training for the day but you know yeah it's it's I, I don't like to eat a lot before my training's over, so usually from about 4 p.m. until 10, I'm eating constantly. Okay, uh, okay. Which, yeah. Well, that's great. Well, that's a positive to it. So what are some of the biggest challenges? I mean, we talk about, obviously, I can see, um, I'm seeing it firsthand, the mental uh, and the physical. Mm-hmm. You're so focused, and so I don't even have to ask that question. Uh, but as far as challenges that you face when you're out there training, is it is it just, hey, there are certain days you get 
where I don't know why I'm doing this or do you always just like and this is the best thing I'm doing and I'm so excited when you're out there yeah I mean it, this is my job and you know it went from when it was my hobby it was my form of stress relief to okay. now it's my stressor unfortunately <laughs> but um, exactly you know I I was a college professor before coming here full-time and okay. so uh, you know I, I love teaching I you know didn't love the grading or the politics of higher education so sure. much but uh, it's a good reminder of you know why I need to keep working hard and keep winning because I want to keep on racing and and uh, so you know that that helps definitely stay motivated from day to day I, th I think the biggest challenge would be I live in Iowa um, okay. in Storm Lake and so it's not really a hotbed of triathlon and I'm, I'm really the only one that's doing it at, at a fairly high level and so I train a hundred percent alone when I'm home and and uh, you know uh, my human contact on a daily basis is you know, the aqua aerobics ladies, <laughs> the guys at the pool yeah. that are the retired professors that come and swim every morning. Yes. And then, uh, and then of course, uh, my wife sure, and, and sure. then my two dogs. And, you know, so, so it's a lot the of same routine is yeah. what you're saying. You want to, you don't have that kind of and breaking so up. Yeah. When I'm tired, it's really hard to push myself in the pool sometimes, sure. or it's hard to, you know, um, just sometimes when you have other people, especially on easy long days, right, it, it just right. helps break the time up. And so that's kind of one of the biggest challenges. But, uh, you know, obviously it's, it's, it's uh, good to be able to do my own training and, sure. and uh, not have to worry about what anybody else is doing either at times. So what would you say to someone out there who mm -hmm. wants to get into it and thinks that, you know, I can either, is it worth it? Should I do this? It, you know, difficulties. What would you say to someone out there who's thinking about trying to do something like this? Yeah, the biggest thing that you need to do is know why, why you want to be there, because that's what's going to keep fueling you when things get tough during training, because everybody gets tired and hang, oh, hangry. Yes. I don't get crabby. I get hangry. I just get hungry. <laughs> um, so, every, you know, everybody goes through those or they go through some dark times during the race where, you know, it's hard just to get to the next half mile or whatever and if, if you know why you're there uh that's kind of what i draw on to uh to get me keep me going to keep you going yeah. so i did do uh some research on you oh dear yeah yeah i found a lot of things now so some fun facts about you so i know that your favorite post race is pepperoni pizza i do enjoy pizza okay I, I plan on hitting up grimaldi's after the race my homestay family got me a gift card there they they were they so did they their research the as punch. well oh no they beat me to the punch. Wait, hold on so your favorite and then you love tacos i do tacos I do. so you're in the perfect place for that but i wanted to give you and your favorite color is green it is so i got you a gift card it has green on it all right and it's got enough on here for all i assume all the amount of pizza you want <laughs> all right. and tacos you want <laughs> Fantastic. And I got you a bottle of champagne to you oh. have to pop this one when you make it through uh, and, and break that uh, ribbon. Sounds good. So there you go. There's awesome. Your, there's, well, thank you yeah, so much. That over there. But uh, yeah. no, so funny. I, I was reading, doing all these fun facts about you and uh, some of the things that uh, you like to do. But um, so tell us, tell us something we'd be surprised to know about you um, that would be interesting or crazy fact uh, about you story. So I ran my first one mile race when I was three years old. Wow. Yeah. I One mile, three yep. years old. Explain that. Uh, you know, my dad. <laughs> well, no, not you. You don't have to explain. That. <laughs> but anyway, go ahead. Yeah, yeah my dad was doing a, a 10K, and okay. like I said, I always wanted to be like my dad, so okay. I signed up. I was the only one in my age group, so I won. Uh, oh, you were the only one in your yeah, the only great. one in the under five. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> they made the age group up just for me. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I, I have the picture. Um, my dad and then uh, a guy from the church that we grew up in yeah. that was a big runner who I, I just admired at the time and uh, been an important picture for me ever since uh, high school. Yeah. So. so what do you see yourself in, and I mean, I'm not interviewing you for the job or anything, but what do you see yourself in the next three to five years? I mean, is it doing Ironmans? Is it, you know, winning Kona every year? I mean, what, what do you see yourself doing? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think I've got a lot of good years of racing left. I'm, I'm 33 right now, okay. and, uh, you know, I think most people peak in this uh, this distance, at least in the full distance, around 38. Oh, so wow. Okay. I, I think my best years are yet to come. They are coming. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I I, uh, I left my job as a, as a college professor six months away from tenure um, because I wanted to look be able to look back and know if I could be a world champion or I not. I was going to ask that. I'm sure that was a difficult decision. But it was. It was a decision you knew what you wanted to do. It was. I'm what the ultimate decision came right after Ironman Texas in 2015. <laughs> okay. So I won Ironman Texas in 2015 okay. and you're up at four in the morning, you do the race and then <laughs> 
you st if you win, you stay and give the finisher medals for the last hour. And so I was here until 1 in the morning. I yeah. was in the pool with Tim at 7 a.m. the next morning, so I really didn't sleep at all. And so then, for all you people out there complaining and going, oh, I just made it through, my legs are cramping, I can't walk. Did you hear that? <laughs> so, yeah, then I had to give the award speech. Oh, my God. And then I drove 17 and a half hours to get home. I went straight to the university, uh, showered and changed no. at the university, and taught 8, 9, 10, and 11 o'clock classes after really sleeping zero hours for two days. And Wow. You know, the drive home was a lot of thinking time and, and talking with my wife, who was awesome and supported me. But, but really what came down to it was a couple of days later, I was meeting with a student um, and uh, who I was, I was their advisor, and we set her, I was setting him up with an internship. I'm like, we need to set this internship up so you can build your resume yeah. to chase after what it is you want most in life. Wow. And I sat back, I'm like, I'm being a hypocrite. Yeah. Uh, I love teaching, but... I wanted to be a world champion wow. most in life. And, so, and then you can get their championship and still go back. Yeah, the and university be a teacher. will be there. I'm sure the yeah. schools will still be around. I mean, they yeah. can't take education away from you. That's always there. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, this is a sport I was teaching in exercise science, and so I've got eight years of learning to do what I'm practicing now, and so I don't think that's going to hurt if I sure. go back, uh, want to go back to the university. But right now I've uh, developed a coaching business, which is, is going well. So um, if, uh, you know, if I keep winning, Why I think I'll be able to. Why don't you run for president? We can use you as a president. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that brain that you have, I mean, totally do this arm and get to those champions, get a couple of more, three more, a hundred more. But we, your brain, you've got to, there's too much more for you to be doing. Oh, yeah, my we'll gosh. See. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a quick commercial and we'll be right back. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> We are broadcasting live from the Woodlands, Texas to the world. You're listening to the only multimedia FM station in Houston, Texas. Your fusion radio. Top 40s, dance, Latin, country, pop, rock and roll. All in one station. Mixing genres and generations. You're listening to KNLY New Waverly, Texas. 91.1 FM, The Boss. It's time to be super again. It's beach season. Killer Abs. For fresh flowers fast, call Barb's Ars Floral at 281-820-2294 with excellent customer service since 1983 for weddings, funeral services, sweet 15s, corporate events, and all occasions. For that special someone you love, barbsirisfloral.com and barbsirisfloralboutique.com. Come on in and pick out of our prestigious gallery at 727 Westmont Houston Road, Houston, Texas 77038. Text 832-466-8414. Barb's Iris Floral delivers fresh flowers fast. This message was from a proud sponsor to KNY 91.1 FM. Texas Crawfish and Music Festival. Come and enjoy the best crawfish in town. Music party for the entire family, April 27th and 28th. Save the date. Performing live, country music artist Junior Gordon. Special guest Curtis Grimes. And more artists. Doors open at noon both days at Preservation Park in Old Town Spring. Children under 5, free with an adult. $12 tickets priced at the gate. Purchase your tickets online at TexasCrawfishFestival.com. Sponsored by Planet Ford, Comfort Suites, Harris County Emergency Medical Services, Global Live, and KNLY 91.1 FM The Boss. We will see you there. This was a proud sponsor of KNLY 91.1 FM. This is E.L. Crane of Real Estate U here each and every Saturday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on 91.1 FM The Boss. Remember, that's Real Estate U. Insightful, informative, and a little humor tossed in. Real Estate U, listening live, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. each and every Saturday, 91.1 The Boss. 
Do you feel that your energy costs are unnaturally high? Do you want to fortify your building and keep it strong and secure for years to come? Then NRG Spray Foam Insulation is the answer you're looking for. Our unique foam insulation is made to help our customers save in energy, prevent gas, air, and moisture infiltration, as well as helping with general stability in your building structure. Call us at 713-936-3021 or visit us online at nrgfoam.com for more information. NRG Spray Foam. Building green, living green. This message was from a proud sponsor to KNY 91.1 film. Welcome back to Today with Cache. It's Thursday. We're here in the Woodlands, Texas, and I have Matt Hansen, professional triathlete himself in the studio. Welcome back. Thank you. It's been so, great. I know. We're, we're getting the party started early. Okay. Yeah. If you've got to come in here, Matt. I have I, champagne. I'm, <laughs> I'm writing. I mean, I'm going to, but I am going to restrict you from drinking it until afterwards. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but anyway, like I have to. But anyway, I, there's one more thing I, I, I read uh, that really touched me because it's something that's dear to me. Um, you had a quote that said, uh, why you do what you do and able to do what you do, uh, God has given me a strong set of lungs and a pair of legs that can take a beating. It is my responsibility to use them to glorify him in any way possible. Yeah, and that's why I'm here. That is very dear to me because I always, uh, I'm a strong believer myself in that. And uh, for all that I do, um, it's because of him. And so uh, I, I, want, I wanted to touch that and say that um, He'll be with you, obviously, yeah, this, this is. Saturday, and I'm sure he'll carry you again, um, but uh, that's that's a beautiful thing. Oh. Um, I'm sure that has carried you throughout your life. It has. It's been, you know, my I grew up in a, an amazing church back home. Um, I haven't been there for uh, a couple years, just my, my uh, family moved away, and so, uh, but they still... They're still praying for you. Still out for me. calling like, you. And checking they're the out first you. ones that hit the like button every time I post something. <laughs> you know, it's we had a small little church there, but um, you know, I, they're still my family. Um, so yeah, it, it uh, it's been something that's been a part of me since I can remember. My parents uh, brought me to church, but um, early on, and and uh, yeah. It, so that that also speaks to your strength and your and your determination and what it carries you. Um, that you are you have that in you, and uh, that's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, and I mentioned yeah. you know you have to know why you're doing it, and, yeah. and for me, that's it. You know, I think everybody is is given talents, and we have a responsibility to use whatever that is um, for the best of our, our abilities. And uh, for whatever reason, uh, God gave me the ability to do this crazy sport, and so Here that's what are. I'm doing. Here yeah. you are. So. Uh, one more question I have before we're wrapping up. What's it like when you know you're coming in and you're about to be the first person? I've, okay, because I'm not going to experience it. So can I live vicariously through sure. you and tell me what that feels like, you know, when you know you see it and everybody's there and the cameras, the lights, everybody's screaming your name. What is that like? Are you like, I don't even pay attention to them, Cash. I don't even know what's no, happening. No, <laughs> that, that's an amazing feeling. Um, I've been uh, fortunate enough to have my wife at the finish line for every race Beautiful. and uh you know the the best feeling in the world that i've ever had was was last year after the battle that i had um you know i don't know if any of you There's watched the race pictures. but yeah. uh yeah that's the race from last year um but i was uh running neck and neck um with with another guy for 25 and a half miles <laughs> and i finally right before you know the last half mile i got a little bit of a gap on him and so it was just an emotionally draining day and yeah. to get to the finish line and, and see that, uh, you know, that tape and then my wife crying right behind oh, there and, and literally I was exhausted. I mean, I ran the fastest marathon that's ever been ran uh, off the bike on that day. Uh, wow. And then my wife, wow. you know, just having my wife literally tackle me, wow. uh, literally, <laughs> uh, as soon as I cross the finish line, like if everybody can have that feeling once in their life, they're a lucky person. Oh. And uh you know, she's, she's been there to support me. I'm so sure. the winning is awesome, but there's a lot of sacrifices that are made with me traveling so much yes. and to train and to race and makes it all worthwhile when, uh, 
you get that that hug at the finish line is the most addicting feeling in the world. No, well, I I'm so glad that you came in and sat with me this morning because yeah, I thanks got for to, asking to come. Well, I got to get to learn a little bit more about the individual and understand why. Um, and it, I'm so 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 thankful. And yes, you are going to do what you're supposed to do on Saturday, and it's going to be a wonderful day for you. Absolutely. So I'll be out there cheering you. Thank you again. I Good appreciate it. You. Thank you. Enjoy your food. Yes, don't we'll eat too do. much. Like, I can say to you, eat whatever you want. And uh, real quick, uh, tomorrow, uh, Today with Cache will be live for the first time uh, at Tea on the Lawn. So please uh, join us uh, tomorrow. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.